Welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. This week we're talking about some groundbreaking research about celiac disease. Today we're talking with Dr. Elena Verdu. She's the director of the Health Research Institute at McMaster University. So, Dr. Verdu, for people that may not know, what exactly is celiacs? So celiac disease is an autoimmune condition. It's an autoimmune disease, which means that our own immune system is going to attack our own tissues. And so in celiac disease, that target tissue is the upper part of the small intestine and specifically the lining of the gut. Now what we, I'm going to call epithelium. And what happens is that that lining of the gut has like finger-like projections that are important to absorb the nutrients from the food we eat. And in celiac disease, that immune-mediated attack will lead to a blunting of those finger-like projections, and that is going to cause many clinical abnormalities, such as, for example, uh, malabsorption and other types of symptoms. And so to have celiac disease, we need two factors. We need to have certain genes, and you need to consume gluten. Gluten is a driver of the immune response. So is there any way that people can treat this other than taking gluten out of their diet? Right now, there are no drugs in the market that you can take. And the only treatment is, as you have mentioned, to completely avoid gluten in your diet. And that, as as many people know, it's very difficult to do. So we've been hearing a lot more about celiac, say over the last decade or so. Are we seeing an increase in the amount of people that, that have this disease? Right, the, you mentioned a very interesting point. So what we have observed is an increase in the uh, number of people that develop in the past 30, 40 years, and we have actually data that we have good studies that show that this is a true increase and not just that we are diagnosing it better and this is not surprising we have seen this increase uh, in many other autoimmune conditions and immune mediated conditions such as type 1 diabetes or even allergic disorders so you've been working as part of a six-year project to try to figure out exactly how and where this gluten response is happening. Some groundbreaking research. What, what did y'all find out with this? Let me first explain what are the processes by which you have inflammation in celiac disease. It has been known for a long time that we need the genes and we need gluten. And so what happens there? Why are these two factors necessary? We know that these genes are going to encode for a molecule that is expressed in immune cells and they are called antigen presenting cells because that's what they do they present antigens to other immune cells and in celiac disease hladq2 encodes for that molecule that will very specifically bind to gluten and in doing this then it makes gluten more visible to the immune cells that now recognize it, those immune cells are called lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, and are going to proliferate and they are going to have the immune response that ends up in damaging the upper lining of the gut. And so we thought that this happened inside of our gut tissues, and indeed, indeed it does. What we asked was, well, in order for that to happen, gluten needs to get through the intestinal wall and in contact with the immune cells, with these antigen presenting cells. So could it be that the lining of the intestine that has cells that don't belong to the immune system also can express these molecules and activate the immune response already there at the, at the interface between the environment, the gut lumen and, uh, and, and the inside of the body, which is the immune system. And so that was the question that we set to answer. So the first thing we did was to take tiny tissues, uh, pieces of tissue from patients with active celiac disease. You do that, that's called a biopsy, and you do it through a, a, a procedure that is called a, an endoscopy. And to measure that these molecules were actually the, the presenting molecules of gluten were actually present in the 
uh, gut lining in the epithelium. And we did this by several techniques, but then the question was, okay, they are there, but do they activate the immune system? And so that's where we faced a, a problem that we had to solve with uh, collaborations with engineering. So that's where the bioengineering came. And so the second step was to build this isolated system where we only had cells from the epithelium, but cells from the epithelium that also only expressed the molecule to see gluten. So we were in a way compartmentalizing the different players to be able to answer this question. And then what we did was to add those immune cells, T lymphocytes, put them in contact only with this epithelium that was only expressing the celiac molecules that actually present gluten. And in doing this, we then measured the immune reaction and we saw that there was an enhanced reaction when we added gluten to the system. And so we answered clearly the question that the epithelium, if, if it expresses this celiac molecule and you have gluten in the mixture and immune cells that will recognize that gluten in the antigen presenting cells, you will have an immune response. It's amazing with as complicated as a human gut is that y'all are able to work all of that out. Now, moving forward, how big of a deal is it now knowing that the epithelium is where that reaction's happening uh, when it comes to learning more about celiacs? So we have suspected this for a long time that the epithelium could play this role, but having demonstrated that it actually stimulates an immune response in the context of gluten places now the epithelium in a center stage. And so there are many drugs that are targeting these steps of the immune response that I mentioned. So one of the things that, uh, that could come in the future is that we use this tool to understand the precise mechanism of action or even test new drugs that block these immune steps. The other interesting question for us and way forward, uh, because of our interest in our lab, we are interested in how the gut microbes that uh, live within us influence immune responses. We have been interested in this for many, many years. And so we know that in celiac disease, even if you have the genes and you are consuming gluten, most of the people that have these two conditions are not going to develop celiac disease. So for many years, we've known that there are cofactors that are involved in, in, in making this progress, tipping the balance, if you wish, towards developing the disease. And for us, an important group of cofactors are uh, microbes, the microbial influence. So one of the things that we can investigate here is to increase the complexity of the system and start using pathogens uh, that have been um, associated with celiac disease to see how those microbes influence this mechanism that we described at the level of the epithelium. Because that's where our cells see microbes. Microbes are in the gut lumen, and this is the first line of cells that are in contact with food and with microbial antigens. Uh, you were talking a little bit about research on drugs. Do you think that y'all's discovery and the research you've done could lead to where maybe there could be a, a medicine that could treat this other than just trying to cut gluten out? So there are many drugs now currently in clinical trial design and they haven't been approved. They have to be tested uh, in, in, in humans, uh, but they are already showing uh, promising results. Um, so I believe that there will be in the next five, 10 years, a drug in the market that will help patients with celiac disease uh, to, um, to navigate and to live with this disease. So Dr. Purdue, where did the funding in, uh, come from to help this project? So this study was funded by a number of grants from uh, Canadian Institutes of Health Research by NSERC and also Canada Celiac Grants.
Well, Dr. Perdue, I, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. I, I think y'all's research is amazing, and I think uh, really glad to hear that it's going to lead to hopefully a, a lot of uh, advancements when it comes to celiac. Thank you for having me.